We've got a bunch of people to thank for setting up the Prodigy Team Star League today. Obviously, Adebisi and Wombat were our fellow casters from yesterday. We've got Josh Prodigy Fallen. He's the one who's creating all of these custom maps. That's twitter.com slash prodigysc, I believe. And uh, we had Professor Frank. That's just what I'm calling him. His name is Jake <laughs> Frank. He's the guy behind the genius of warpprism.com. He's allowing everybody to... Uh, watch not only myself and Cat's Pajamas casting the games, but you can also listen in on the 2v2 Skype conversations that are going on from both of our teams. Complexity Stake from Complexity Gaming, uh, formerly known as Star Life, was instrumental in getting all the players hooked up, all these 2v2 teams uh, entering the tournament. He was a big hand in that, getting some people to actually come play in this thing. And Justin.tv, of course, is our streaming service. They have a new service out called Twitch.tv. Definitely go check that out. It's all about streaming online games. And Akaya, actually bit.ly slash alpha caster. He's the one who actually came up with this uh, clever little 2v2 overlay that we're using at the top of the screen to keep track of the score and the races and the colors of all of our players today. So definitely want to thank everybody involved with the Prodigy Team Star League. Alan, of course, for uh, basically hatching this plan and getting everything put together, uh, administrating and organizing the entire tournament. Definitely big thanks. And, of course, Artivan, who has been uh, refereeing and... Um, those guys actually invited us to come cast. I'm Ask Joshi. You can see all my stuff at Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube.com slash Ask Joshi. And, of course, casting with me uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow is Cat's Pajamas. Absolutely. Uh, so you guys can check out my stuff. My primary point of contact for everyone is Twitter.com slash Cat's Pajamas SC2. But you can also find me at YouTube, Facebook, and JustinTV.com slash Cat's Pajamas SC2. Uh, in addition, WellPlay.org slash Cat's Pajamas. So... I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this entire tournament. Looks like we're getting some positive responses on Twitter as well. And, uh, yeah, that Warp Prism thing that's up is so cool. Leah Jackson, in fact, uh, giving us a shout-out as well, talking about the fact that you can switch between all the player sounds and things like that. Makes for a really, really fun, inventive tournament experience. I, I think that's absolutely awesome. And it looks like Destiny has, in fact, joined the lobby so after the loss that they suffered before due to a forfeit, they are back in it. Destiny versus Minigun going up against the most prolific 2v2 team in the entire world. Yeah, if you, uh, if you don't have your input limits reached, maybe we can actually show uh, maybe Hack Protect's profile. Oh, we're about to start, but I assure you, they both have Predator icons uh, right there, which means that they've got thousands of wins. I believe a thousand is each race to be able to get that Predator icon. They both have it. <laughs> so they, they played a lot of games, folks, and that's all they do all day. They actually, Protex stream is up on TeamLiquid.net. You can catch 2v2 basically any time of day if you tune into that. And here we go, guys. We're going to get things started down at the 9 o'clock position. We have Complexity Minigun uh, from Team Destiny spawning as our blue Protoss player. His teammate here is the one and only, formerly Root, formerly Complexity, Destiny. He is our pink Zerg player. <clears throat> Their opponents, the aforementioned most prolific 2v2 team in the world. We have Hack Protex spawning as our orange Zerg player. His teammate is Power. He is our red Terran player. So there we are, a ZT versus ZP. I think this is the first ZP combination we've had, actually. It's usually Zerg and Terran, uh, if anything, and Protoss Terran from Subsons, who actually just knocked out We had the State Spanishi Wasp. State and Spanishi were Protoss and Zerg, and they didn't do so hot. <laughs> well, they but... tried, like, very, very... The thing was was that it was weird because the game they took off of Subsons, <clears throat> because I believe they were 2 out. I believe they took one game, and that was when they decided to do just mass Tier 1 unit rush or something like that, which is what Subsons had been falling prey to quite a bit. Um, and this circumstance are you know I've, obviously they tried a couple of cheesy rushes as well and those didn't work out at all so i'm curious to see what destiny and minigun do because apparently they put on a pretty good performance yesterday um yeah not sure who they beat exactly but i'm a little disheartened that they actually had to forfeit their first series today against uh, team eg team eg just basically got a free ticket into the winners finals but destiny and minigun now getting a chance to try and show off here and minigun Quickly scouting a hack protag, it's good to know where your Zerg opponent is because usually they are the target of any kind of early aggression just mm -hmm. because they can't build wall offs. They basically have to rely entirely on Queen's Lings and Spine Crawlers uh, at any early point in the game and of course the help from their teammate, but 
Uh, we actually have two pink players on our overlay right now, Power and Destiny, <laughs> but uh, oh, Power is actually sweet. red right now. So, uh, But if you notice on the minimap, these players are pretty far away from their allies, actually about equal distance from your ally as well as your opponent. So it can be very difficult if you are suddenly met with lots of speedlings and marauders, let's say, or whatever the case may be. It can be a long time before your teammates are actually able to come and assist you. And Protex making his way up right away. He has uh, already 12 Zerglings, four more added to the eight that's, that are coming up. So he is just going to do Zergling aggression. We'll see if Minigun is going to be prepared for this. And he is indeed putting down another pylon. Uh, the Zealot is going to be done, but it's going to be done in about 10 seconds. And there is an emergency pylon put down, but a lot of damage is going to be suffered here to the Cybernetics Core. Our overlay went away. Our Oh, so it did. Not sure so what happened there. Give me two seconds. Yeah, it likes to go. do that. It's okay. Okay, and those lings did actually manage to either pick off that pylon, or it looks like Minigun perhaps just canceled it and got that zealot squeezed in there instead with some probes. But either way, uh, that, that wall off was nowhere close to complete when Protech arrived, and now it looks to be pretty solid. So I think pretty clutch timing there for Minigun. May have just saved his bacon, so to speak. And uh, Protech might actually consider moving on over to Destiny's base just to see what he's got. Looks like those lings are actually headed over there now. There's a roach warren coming up, or actually already completed, with uh, two roaches on the way. Yes, but those roaches and spine crawler are going to have to do quite a bit of work because we have a lot of speedlings making their way in. Ten of them, as a matter of fact, but they immediately see the roaches and spine crawlers and back on out of there. Yeah, and the spine crawler's attack is actually called Impaler Tentacle. <laughs> which is just the weirdest thing in StarCraft 2. So the Impaler Tentacle uh, <laughs> just slammed one of the Zerglings in the face and <laughs> caused Protect to retreat. Were those Hellions coming along there from power? Yes. I think we just saw this in the <laughs> uh, Cats and Druby versus Subsons matchup. These early Hellions and Speedlings just attacking a Protoss player. And yeah. it was pretty effective, if I remember correctly, especially no. with that Overlord doing the spotting. It was, dare I say, super effective. Um, so it looks like the force field goes down. These Hellions have still not made their way up to the top. He's got to wait for Destiny's reinforcements. Destiny does have seven Roaches ready to go, but Protec is just chomping at the bit to get in there with his Zerglings. Still just mass-producing Zerglings. We have a bunch of Hellions that are going to make their way up in a bit. Destiny's still not reinforcing. He is going to make his way over soon, I would imagine. He's got ten Roaches. Now, those are going to be able to do a significant amount of damage. This gateway will be able to hold up for quite some time. Uh, now some Zerglings are being sent over as well. And there we go, another pylon being produced. A minigun can recycle that often as he goes up to four gateways himself. And, I don't know, just glancing around, we've got a uh, starport coming up from power. They are getting a big enough lead now to actually allow him to do that, or maybe not even a big enough lead, just putting on enough pressure uh, to be actually getting that starport up. And, uh, Destiny is moving now with the Roaches to try and come help out here. Minigun did lose a pylon, um, but he's pushing down his own ramp. These lanes are trying to get us around on all the Zealots. Obviously, oh. uh, he'd prefer to get those juicy stalkers and sentries, but now the Destiny Roaches have arrived. This is actually going to cut it pretty close. That's a lot of links still alive. Minigun is going to be left with very little after all is said and done. Yes, Protec is going to move on into the probe line now, try and get some easy kills instead of uh, dancing around with those Zealots for too much longer. and. He's denying a little bit of mining time, didn't actually get anything killed, and now Destiny and Minigun do have enough units here to try and finish these off. Yep, absolutely, and those are going to get trapped. All the rest of the Zerglings are going to go down. A few Hellions tried to make their way into Destiny's base, but they didn't really do any damage. There were enough Roaches, plus that uh, Impaler Tentacle <laughs> to uh, do whatever damage they could. So Destiny and Minigun are actually in a pretty good spot. Um, Protech is way down in supply because he was just committing to that uh, Roach all, or I'm sorry, that Ling all in. He has converted over to Roaches now, but he doesn't have all that many, uh, just seven on the field there. Whereas Destiny is coming up with much, 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 much more. We do have a big drop coming out of power, though, so non-stop aggression is going to be the order of the day from Power and Protech. This medevac loaded up with two Marauders and four Marines. Destiny does have a ton of Roaches on the map, but they are currently actually heading toward Protect's base. So this drop could do a little bit of damage. The Impaler Chemical on the Queen obviously can help out a little bit there. And now Protect has enough Roaches to actually be able to stand up at least for a little while. I'm not sure what power has got aside from uh, those Marines inside that medevac to come in and be able to assist. Looks like just a couple of Hellions not going to get up. 
because I think um, this could be very difficult here for Protect to try and hold up on his own. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like Destiny and Minigun are going to be able to break their way through. Quite a bit of damage being done now. There are a few spine crawlers up as Protect is going to try a uh, little bit of a defense here, but he is still on one base. Destiny is expanding and they can play the contain game for quite a while. Protect won't be able to catch up and uh, chop those units off. And he's going to have to wait for reinforcements from Power. And it looks like Power is going to make his way over with a bunch of SCV sent to auto repair as his engagement goes on. They're actually now inside the base of Protec. He doesn't have another hatchery anywhere, so if this uh, little band of roaches isn't enough to hold it off, I don't think he's going to be alive much longer. There is a roach horn actually being focused down incredibly quickly, so no more roaches going to be incoming after those three that Protec's got in production right now. Drone Sark takes some fire. Here come a couple of Hellions and Marines. Uh, looks like Minigun and Destiny still have quite a lot of units left alive, though. These roaches are going to start cleaning up very quickly. SCV's actually coming along for the ride as well to try and... Uh, grill the faces on the roaches, but it looks like they will actually be able to keep Protec alive, if not uh, just having him set back quite a bit. Yep, absolutely, and Minigun is already reinforcing and making his way over to Power Space, and that is not going to be good for Power, although Minigun decides to back away. Uh, I guess he caught wind of all those units there on the high ground. Let's see here. Let's take stock of where players are at in terms of supply. Actually, uh, 119 to 107, so uh, advantage there for Destiny and Minigun. Now, both of those players are on two bases apiece. Of course, Minigun just tried to establish his next nexus, um, but they are significantly ahead of where Protec is, and Protec's economy, are, um, economy is down, and he is forced to produce another Roach Warren as well. So Destiny looking pretty darn good at this point. This is a really long time for a Zerg player to be on one base. Obviously, he's got his lair coming up now. So he's going to be switching directions away from those roaches, trying to maybe perhaps get some mutalisks out since there's no, not a ton of anti-air out of uh, Destiny or Minigun right now. First robotics facility being built and uh, that expansion for Minigun, but still a couple of Marauders and Marines alive for power inside Destiny's base, and he just did a big old drop in that side of the main there, actually picking up the infestation piece very quickly. Did excellent choice there. Might even want to do the same there for that Roach Warren and get Destiny set back. Oh no, he's actually going to be able to pick off the lair completely. Oh, so wow. man, that was a huge shift in momentum. Uh, power doing all the work here, uh, taking out Destiny's huge, huge tech structures. Absolutely, and Power's going to make his way right over to Minigun's base, it appears, because Minigun did pull all of his forces, and uh, <clears throat> he really doesn't have much in the way to stop this. In oh fact, he has no forces back at his base. So here come the units from Minigun running their way back as fast as possible. Destiny not able to bring his units back as well. This is going to be very, very bad. This could do a significant amount of damage. Power dropping down all those forces. He is going to knock out a couple of pylons here. He's also going to be able to take down this robotic space with no Colossus tech whatsoever. Minigun comes to reinforce, but I don't know if he has enough units to just engage this straight up. And if they didn't have to trickle in because of the size of that ramp, if they were able to get us around or something like that, maybe it would have been a chance. But sending those first two or three units in first was not enough. He's going to lose all these structures, perhaps even the Nexus, and that would, I believe, seal the deal uh, if he were to lose that Nexus. However, Destiny is showing up now with some reinforcing roaches. Uh, Medivac actually does go down, so all these units are now forfeit. They're going to be dying.